This final video for lab unit two is going to be about the salt tolerance test. So NaCl is the chemical formula for salt. So I know the title of this slide is a little bit redundant. Um, I meant to put the word salt in parentheses, so I apologize for that. But the salt tolerance test is a selective test because remember, most organisms cannot survive in the presence of a lot of salt. And so for this test in, in lab, we would actually be inoculating a salt panel. So there would be five tubes, one that has 3% salt, another with 5% salt, then 7%, 9%, and 11% concentrations. And you would inoculate the same organism into all of the tubes to see what amount of salt it can tolerate. Now, of the streptococci, most of them can tolerate about 3% salt. So you would observe turbidity or growth in the 3% tube. But after that, most of the streptococci cannot grow. However, Enterococcus faecalis is a streptococci, but it doesn't belong to the genus streptococcus. And that's because it's a little bit different than those organisms. And one way that it is different is that it can grow in up to 7% salt. So that's gonna be a big difference between Enterococcus and Streptococcus species. Now, if you think back, which genus of organisms loves salt? That would be our Staphylococcus organisms. So those two organisms can grow in all concentrations of salt for this lab, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at some of those results. But remember, what we're looking for is growth or turbidity. But you have to remember that some organisms display a sediment growth pattern in a broth, which means they grow at the bottom of the tube. So you always wanna make sure that you check the bottom of the tube or even give the tubes a gentle shake to make sure that you're actually observing no growth if you were to see a tube on the right, okay? So I, I may have worded that a little wonky. If you look at this picture and you look at the tube on the right, it looks very clear, right? No growth. But you always wanna make sure to give the tube a gentle shake or look at the bottom to make sure that it actually is clear. That's what I was trying to say, okay. So let's take a look at some results. So this is what you would observe if you were to inoculate Staphylococcus aureus or Staphylococcus epidermidis or most other staphs into a salt panel. You would observe turbidity in all tubes, which would be a positive result in all tubes. And that is because they are salt tolerant. Here's what you would observe for Enterococcus faecalis. So again, you would observe turbidity up to 7%, and then you would observe no turbidity at 9 and 11%. So that's a positive reaction or positive result for 3%, 5%, and 7%, and then a negative result for 9% and 11%. Now make sure you pay close attention on your flow chart because when it's referring to the salt tolerance tests, it asks only for the observations and results for a specific salt concentration. So keep that in mind when you're filling out your flow chart. So again, Enterococcus faecalis can go all the way up to 7%, but look what happens for any of the Streptococcus species, including Streptococcus bovis, Notice it can only grow in the 3% salt solution. Now I'm pointing out Streptococcus bovis because this is our other group D strep that remember we talked about it in the BEA video, how both of them give the same observations and results when you streak them on a BEA. So we need a test to differentiate those two organisms and salt broth is how you do it. Now, just FYI, to kind of link back this last video to one of the first videos, 
If you think back to the mannitol salt auger video, which is the MSA video, remember that Enterococcus faecalis had a unique growth pattern on an MSA plate because it does not grow like the rest of the streptococci. On an MSA plate, Enterococcus, sorry, Enterococcus faecalis is able to grow. I'm trying to pull it up, so pardon what you can see on my screen. Enterococcus faecalis, Enterococcus faecalis um, grows very similar or identically to Staphylococcus aureus when streaked on an MSA plate. This was another big difference between Enterococcus faecalis and all the other streptococci. So how would you differentiate Enterococcus faecalis from Staphylococcus aureus? Well, that would go back down to the SALT test. So I'm gonna apologize. I don't wanna exit out of PowerPoint. So I'm just gonna do a lot of scrolling, so I'm really sorry. So remember, they grew the same on MSA. So how could you differentiate Enterococcus and Staphylococcus aureus with the salt broth? Because Enterococcus faecalis can only grow up to 7%, whereas Staphylococcus aureus can grow all the way through 11%. Now, this information is not going to go onto your flowchart, okay? Because remember, on our flowchart, we separated out the staphs and the streps right off the bat. But it's good to know these similarities between the Enterococcus faecalis and Staphylococcus aureus for the lab exam and lab quizzes. Okay? Because Enterococcus faecalis doesn't behave like all of the other streptococci when it comes to salt tolerance. It's a little bit more tolerant than the other streps. All right, y'all, that is the end of this video and of lab unit two. As always, let me know if you have any questions.